a group of Cambodian models takes to the catwalk. This fashion show is being held in the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh. Cambodia's fashion industry is on the rise. The country has come a long way after more than two decades of internal conflict. On the streets of the capital, young people can't resist showing off the latest styles. Traditionally, long, straight black hair was considered beautiful, but that's no longer the case. The hip style these days is dyed brown hair with the upper portion crimped. Some women have even gone as far as getting tooth accessories. Young people now spend a significant proportion of their income on looking good. Economic development has led to a steady rise in the average monthly wage in Cambodia, which has now reached about $70. This man is spending $23 on a pair of shoes. The latest trends in Cambodia are heavily influenced by South Korea. South Korean TV dramas are extremely popular these days. Many young Cambodians like to adopt the fashions of the stars. Recently, though, some youngsters are moving beyond imitating overseas trends to develop their own styles. In this episode of Asia Insight, we take a look at Cambodia's budding new fashion scene. The main gate of the King's Palace stands proudly in Phnom Penh, Cambodia's capital. It's the backdrop for a fashion magazine shoot. The model and crew are all Cambodian. The model is posing on a Ciclo, a traditional mode of transport. Before the Civil War, Ciclos were a very common sight on the city streets, but now they're fairly rare. Photographer Che Ratha came up with the concept. The crew is working for the monthly magazine Sovereign. It's the country's first fashion magazine produced by and for Cambodians. The majority of magazines are sold at street kiosks. More than 10 women's magazines are published regularly. They focus on celebrity gossip. But Sovereign focuses exclusively on fashion and lifestyle. One copy costs $2. That's more than other magazines, but circulation has grown to 3,000 per month since it started in 2011. Every model in the magazine is Cambodian. The articles are written in Khmer, the official language of Cambodia. The publishers insist on good quality. Their aim is to produce a magazine that can hold its own against foreign publications. Sovereign's office is in central Phnom Penh. The 14 staff members are all in their 20s. The editors and writers are meeting to discuss the upcoming issue. Okay. 
ពីព័ន្ធនោះបានចោទថលើកោះដល់ចឹងដល់បងបានសិលិចហូបហើយខ្លះខ្លះហើយអើ Editor in chief Lee Soden is only 25. Before Sovereign, most fashion magazines were imported. They were mainly written in English and French and rather expensive. Lee saw a gap that needed to be filled. He began producing a reasonably priced magazine in the Khmer language that focuses on Cambodian culture and traditions. But Lee believes Cambodians must first come to terms with their own troubled history. After gaining power in 1975, the Pol Pot regime espoused an extreme form of communism. It massacred over one and a half million people. Much of Cambodian art and culture perished with the victims. The country has been at peace for around 20 years and is steadily being rebuilt. At seven o'clock in the morning, Trucks carry young women from rural areas to Phnom Penh. They're on their way to the capital to work in the clothing industry. In the mid-1990s, foreign apparel manufacturers began producing clothing in Cambodia to take advantage of low labor costs. Clothing now accounts for approximately 90% of the country's exports. It's a key driver of economic growth. Cambodia has moved from behind to become a vital cog in the fashion industries of industrialized nations. In July 2013, an event called Designers Week was held for the first time to showcase the work of designers living in Cambodia. It's organized by a publishing company. Designers are eager to display their work there. This boutique is in central Phnom Penh. All the clothing here was created by Nat Soknan, the boutique's owner. Soknan was chosen from among 20 candidates to exhibit at the second Phnom Penh Designers Week. Only three slots were available for new designers. It's a great chance for him to display his talents. <laughs> This woman is shopping for a dress to wear to a wedding. She came in after seeing the dress in the window. Okay. Soknan opened his boutique a year ago. Although he's gradually gaining more customers, the shop isn't very well known and money is tight. He works on new designs whenever he can. Saknan was born to a farming family in northern Cambodia. While studying agriculture at university in Phnom Penh, he became hooked on fashion. After graduation, he worked part-time as a model and began selling clothes imported from neighboring Thailand. 
His interest in fashion continued to grow. He eventually decided to study fashion design for 18 months in Bangkok. In 2013, he opened his boutique with the money he'd saved from his job selling imported clothes. Suknan lives with his aunt about a 15-minute drive from his store. He's transformed part of her home into a studio. He works here with four female staff members. The four women all come from Soknan's home village, where work is scarce. Soknan invited them to come and work for him when he opened his store. Mary says that in the beginning, she had problems even stitching in a straight line using a machine. <laughs> Soknan plans to present six party dresses at the Designers Week fashion show. It's the first show he's ever taken part in, and the pressure is on. The show dresses are on top of the normal workload of three dresses a week. The team is struggling to keep up. They have only three more days to get ready. Mary's been entrusted with producing a belt for one of the catwalk pieces. Soknan wants to make the dresses using only Cambodian silk. Sarah culture was once common in rural villages, but the civil war led to the destruction of most of the country's silk farms. Cambodians from rural areas are also moving to the city as the country's economy picks up. As a result, fewer and fewer people are engaged in silk weaving. The traditional craft is disappearing. It's 10 p.m. Soknan and his staff take a dinner break. This is Soknan's aunt. Soknan, his brother, sister, and his staff all live at her house. Soknan sees success at the show as vital if he wants to make it as a designer. The team gets straight back to work after dinner. They continue late into the night. This upmarket boutique is in an affluent part of Phnom Penh. It's owned by Cambodia's most successful designer. The sophisticated designs have an Eastern flair. They've impressed customers from around the world, including fans from fashion centers such as Paris and Tokyo. Very stylish, very sexy, but at the same time very comfortable. This is my best store in Cambodia. <laughs> the designer, is Romida Kath. Her father was a diplomat. 
The family moved to Paris when she was five, four years before the outbreak of the Civil War. She grew up loving fashion and went on to work as a designer in Paris. Eventually, she decided to make a contribution to her war-torn home country. And at the age of 28, after the end of hostilities, she moved to Phnom Penh to open her boutique. Kath always employs locals and makes all the clothes she designs in Cambodia. She hopes to inspire young Cambodian designers to achieve similar success. Young people are too, um, I think they want to, they, they, they like what is coming from Thailand or from Korea or, and maybe they should have their own identity as well because I think that's very important. It's the day before the Designers Week fashion show. Rehearsals are about to get underway at the venue, a hotel in central Phnom Penh. Twelve designers based in Cambodia will be showing their work over three days. All the show's models are Cambodian. They were selected by the organizer and assigned to the designers. Soknan watches as they practice their catwalk routine. But Soknan soon realizes there's a problem. One, two, three, four, five. No, there, another there's one. another one. Oh, it's going on. One of his models has failed to show up. Soknan quickly goes looking for a replacement. The organizers find him another model, but he needs to alter the dress to make sure it fits. Soknan tries to make the model feel at ease, but he had carefully measured each model and tailored the dress to fit. He wanted to show the native silk to its best advantage. Changing the model has spoiled the dress's lines. It's the day of the show. Only six hours are left before it starts. Another problem has arisen. Soknan is trying to fix another dress at his studio. Maybe turn on the call thing. Call. Call a Soknan manages to stay calm. He works quickly but steadily. His aunt prays for her nephew's success. At the venue, final preparations are being made. The makeup artists and all the support staff are also Cambodian. A fair number of overseas fashion journalists are at the show, curious to see what the Cambodian designers have created. With only two hours to go, 
Soknan finally makes his way to the venue. He immediately starts dressing his models. He's anxious to see whether the adjusted clothes will fit properly. Fashion shows are still very new to Phnom Penh. Most of the models aren't used to strutting down the catwalk in a long dress. Soknan adjusts the hemlines to make it easier for them. Soknan has been chosen to open the show. His models are on in 30 minutes. <laughs> there are 400 people in the audience. A buzz of anticipation goes around the venue. Soknan is almost ready. All he needs to do is fit this golden headpiece, which is used in traditional Cambodian dance. But another problem occurs. The headpiece is smaller than expected. It won't fit over the cloth on the model's head. The cloth is showing in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, the collection of Soknan. Soknan manages to get ready just in time. The lines of the dress the new model is wearing turned out beautifully. This golden silk dress dazzles the crowd. Cambodians believe gold is the most auspicious color. Lee, the editor of Sovereign, seems impressed with Soknan's work. His first ever collection is a great success. It's very unique. And let's say for us, we also have our own brand designing. So it's, it's good to see that there are a lot of new brands out there who will do something new, but still keep the Cambodian style and tradition, you know. I think the confidence of the models has been really strong and the designs have been really good. Particularly like the design where the dress had um, a gold back uh, lining to the dress and, uh, and they came on. But yeah, really um, elegant and sophisticated and stylish. After the show, Soknan thanks his staff. <laughs> 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 
ngày nay chỉ chụp chơi thông của nhau và nhiều bạn và hai sản lại của nhau The people at Sovereign Magazine liked Soknan's collection so much, they featured it in the latest edition. The day after the show, Soknan borrows a friend's car and drives to Takeo province in southern Cambodia. He makes a two-hour journey to a small village. This is one of the few areas where traditional silk weaving survives. Saknan's visit is in preparation for his next project. Soknan wants to continue using his skills as a fashion designer to keep introducing people to the beauty of Cambodia. Cambodia's fashion scene is beginning to bloom, much like the dreams of creative young people determined to place the country's culture firmly on the international stage. <laughs>